Um, so the big differences uh, for me are, are num actually there's a number of differences. First and foremost, um, it's really important that those who believe in independence like I do continue to approach the debate with honesty. So what you won't hear from me is, by the way, Max, we'll be independent tomorrow and there'll be a river of milk and honey and, by the way, we'll put £350 million on the side of a bus and we'll tell you you'll get that back every single week. Right. What we will do is try to be... Uh, well, not try to be, we will be evidence-based and facts-based and equally be upfront about where the challenges are. So, for example, Scotland will face a deficit that we'll have to try to bring down. So we'll have to work within fiscal, make sure we are fiscally sustainable uh, in that regard. We'll have to be really upfront about some of the, main, some of the points you've already made around if we're in the European Union and the UK remains outside of the European Union, what does that mean around, for example, custom checks for goods? And we've talked about that in a recent paper as part of the series that I've mentioned already. But what we'll also be honest about is the massive opportunity that if Scotland had access to its oil and gas revenues, was able to, of course, unleash the potential of the net zero economy, particularly offshore wind, where we have massive potential, uh, and we were able to uh, carve our own path and our own future, then here's what we could uh, achieve uh, and could do. So we're not, we're not, uh, we're not trying, to, trying to appeal to people's emotions. We're trying to, you know, and there's nothing wrong with doing that, actually, to, to, to some extent. But what we're trying to do is absolutely appeal uh, to the evidence base. And I think those things that we were promised in 2014, we were promised if you vote no to independence, that's the only way to guarantee your membership of the European Union. And then what happened two years later? We were told, by the way, if you vote uh, for, for uh, uh, opposing independence and for continued Westminster rule, then you'd have the broad shoulders of the EU's economy and the UK's global influence. And look how those things have fallen apart. And we were told when we warned, by the way, one day Boris Johnson might be Prime Minister, they said, well, oh, complete and utter scare stories from those who believe in independence. And look where we ended up being. So, look, we'll do our best to always stick to the evidence basis. Um, and at the same time, those emotional connections that people have to the United Kingdom, never downplaying them. You know, that important connection that people have, who feel British, for example, who live in Scotland, we shouldn't ever downplay that. We should say, you know what, you should feel, you can absolutely feel British and still vote for independence. Because what we're not telling you to do is rip up that cultural and social union. What we're saying is it's not better that we make decisions for ourselves uh, and, and, and not meet the needs uh, and, and interests of the country and make those decisions in Scotland as opposed to a country so many hundreds of miles away that where Scotland often feels like a bit of an afterthought. Um, 